friends, Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa String Works Workshop. Today is Tuesday, the 15th of March, 2022. I forgot one. Here's another one that's in the shop. <laughs> this was sitting behind the base case, the big base, you know, the upright base, the Taylor base that's got the big hole in it. This was sitting behind that and I just didn't see it. I thought I had another one in the shop. I thought, man, it seems like I'm missing one. And sure enough, there's where it was. It's a uh, Yamaha uh, FG160. And yeah, it needs a neck reset. I, you know, I'm the first one to avoid that if you can avoid it. And also, not just because I avoid it, it's because usually it's caused by a different problem. And quite honestly, part of this one and i'm saying part because part of it is the neck angle is just wrong but part of it is this area back here but this area back here <sighs> i'm not going to tackle it this time and the reason i'm not is because on the inside i don't know let's try a mirror and see if you can see this it's just different on the inside i really haven't seen one done like this that i've at least not to my memory. Yeah, right about there. It's covered in like gauze stuff. Now it's not just the X brace that's covered. That's what's weird. And and but the X brace is covered in gauze that's really large. Down here further, the X brace that cuts through this way, it's got the braces that come off of it. All of that's covered in gauze too. Everything's covered in gauze. A lot of the bridge plate is covered in gauze. In fact, you know, a good chunk of the bridge plate is, well, a corner of it is, I should say. I think all of that was added later. It was done pretty well. Whoever did it did a good job. I say I think it was, and the only reason I say that is because it doesn't match on this side. This side here doesn't have the gauze. But anyway, because of all that gauze and because it's all glued down, uh, I'm not going to mess with trying to get in there and, you know, put a new bridge plate in it. You know, all that. So there is a pretty good hump here. This bridge has been cut way down. It's very thin. Let's just show you how thin it is. They should be in the neighborhood of 300 thousandths. You know, just in that neighborhood. It doesn't have to be 300 thousandths. But this one is uh, 250 thousandths, so it's quite low. Typically, they're taller than that. You know, 248, 250, right around there. So it's been cut down quite a bit. And when you put a straight edge on this one, looky here, it comes below that yet. So if it's going below that, when it, it really should be above it by approximately a sixteenth of an inch when you're laying flat on here. So yes, this one definitely needs a neck reset. There's just no real options. Ordinarily, there's a different reason for it. Uh, there really is most of the time, but sometimes they just need neck resets, and this one's the one of those. Let me let me show you how much of a hump there is here, because there is a significant hump here too. See, it it rocks pretty good. Probably doesn't show up as well that way as it will if I turn it this way for you. But, you know, it rocks pretty good. So there is a significant hump, but all of that's glued tight in there and with all that extra gauze, I'm not going to tackle this. I'm just not going to deal with it. You know, you can only do what you can do. And uh, at some point it would just be too cost prohibitive. And I believe this is the point where it would be too cost prohibitive here. If this was a real high-end guitar, I'd probably put a new bridge on it because this bridge has been cut down so much, which is probably why there's so much of a hump here. You know, you can go so far with everything. You know, there's always a point of diminishing return. They've reached the point of diminishing return here. It's kind of caused a problem. You know, if we get the neck angle right, this will probably last a very long time as is. So we're going to try to get the neck angle right, but not today. So today, instead, we're going to start on this mandolin only because this is a local musician and I know he's in a hurry and he's going to be wanting this thing back. And I think I can do this one fairly quickly, even though it does require a fret job, I think. 
But I thought I'd start with the cosmetic stuff and the creeping crud here on the neck. Uh, yeah, it's pretty creepy. We're gonna try to get rid of a lot of that and fix this broken part here and fix this binding issue right here. So we're gonna try to do the simple stuff today, just get the cosmetic stuff up and let it set and rest. And then maybe tomorrow or the next day we'll try to do the fret job and get that out of here. You know, I could try to do this on the, on the mandolin and honestly I think this would be easier, to, easier done off the mandolin. So I think I'm just going to take it off. Easier yet is just taking out this one screw rather than this whole bolt and nut thing. That screw there comes out, the whole thing's loose. And then you should be able to pull it right out of the side of the neck here. It's really stuck back in there a long ways. I don't believe I ever saw one with bigger pins and stuck in any further. Ah! When you know that pin came out of the... One pin came out correctly. And the other pin pulled out of the plastic. Yeah, it's always something. And maybe I should just leave it like that. I don't know. Typically they come out of the wood. So I'll take it out of the wood. And we'll probably re-cement that in the hole here too. Oh my goodness. <clears throat> it is never simple. Never. I mean like never. <clears throat> you should know that before you start this as a career. You will never get the easy way out. It will always be the difficult way. That's just a fact of this kind of work. I also mentioned yesterday that I didn't have the fret wire for this. Well, turns out I had four pieces of it, and I think it'll be enough to do this. Yeah, there's more than two feet here, and that's what typically they sell is doing one fretboard. And this is the small stuff. I checked Stumex website, and they don't sell this, or at least if they do, I didn't find it. You may find it and point me to it, I don't know. But this is only 40 thousandths wide. The smallest stuff I could find on Stumax site was 53 thousandths. I checked these and they also measure 40 thousandths. So right there, 40 thousandths exactly. So this is the stuff I need and I just so happen to have that much of it. So I think I've got enough to do the job. Don't have to order any in. That's another reason I decided to go ahead and do this. Like I said, I'm only gonna do the cosmetic stuff today, not the fret job. I think I'll start with the most cosmetic of all, getting the creeping crud off of here. So let me set up for that. I think the first thing I'm gonna try, <clears throat> I've got these plastic razor blades, and I'm gonna see if I can scrape some of this thick junk off here, because it is thick. Well, that's not going all that well. It's kind of cemented itself. It's pretty thick and pretty cemented. All right, plan B. I got some very hot water here with uh, some antibacterial dishwashing soap. And I'm pretty sure that's what it's gonna take to get this off of here. Creepy. Completely creepy. Oh my gosh, so creepy I don't want to touch those parts. You can see it's coming off. This is not only DNA, but I think we may have a whole body here. That's uh, just about got side number one. Side two is just as bad, if not worse. Probably lose all of its sustain now that we've taken all this weight off the neck and peg head here. That's a joke, son, that's a joke. If I had a kid this dirty, I'd put him in the washing machine. There would be no point in trying to give him a bath. Oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure we probably should have called uh, 
the police and had them do uh, DNA analysis on this because there could have been a whole body here uh, and I may have just washed it down the drain. We'll never find them now. Oh my gosh. I really thought it would chip off. It's so, so thick. I mean, this truly is thick. You can feel the bump. That last little bit there's playing hard to get. As you can see, it's coming off, but it's playing hard to get. But I've gone this far, and by gosh, I'm gonna get it. Might have to get the razor blade after that. It's really hard right there. That might be the spot that started it all for all I know. Oh my gosh. I am not gonna quit till that spot is gone. That's about the last of it right there, I think. Oh my gosh. Okay, I got a clean towel. I'm gonna go over the whole section here. It's still coming off with a little bit of stuff, as you can see. Looking much better. I'll try to use the dry part of the towel now. Clean it up. Oh, there's even some back here on the body. Cosmetic one, done. Okay, well, moving on to cosmetic number two. You can see what caused this to break off. It fell over and hit something right there. Uh, that's the thing. You, people lean, lean these up against walls or against chairs and things, and then they fall over and bango, you know. That's what causes these tuning keys on the ends of guitars and things to be bent. You'll see them bent on the ends of old guitars all the time. It's because they've been leaned up against something, they fell over, and the tuning key hit. Trust me, I know that for a black and white fact. If you've got bent tuning keys, that's what's happened to it. The easy thing would have been to have glued this with some wood glue and then to find a way to clamp it. And maybe it's still the thing to do. But he did try gluing it himself with CA glue, he said. Quite honestly, I don't see much CA glue on this. And in fact, I don't really see any glue on it. So I'm wondering if I couldn't get by with the tight bond. I don't, I honestly do not see any glue. If I saw a heavy CA glue, I'd for sure just re-glue it with CA glue because CA glue sticks to itself better than it sticks to anything else. But honestly, it feels like bare wood. He said he, he tried gluing it though with CA glue. But I don't see any residue at all, and I've got my close-up glasses on. The problem with using the wood glue is clamping this, and honestly, I don't know that I can. I, if I knew I could clamp it really easy, I'd just put the wood glue on it and call it good. Let me see if some kind of clamp will clamp it. If I can't do it dry, I sure can't do it wet. That's a good lesson for most new luthiers. If you can't clamp it up dry, you'll never be able to clamp it up wet. And just because you can clamp it up dry doesn't mean you can clamp it up wet. Wet is slick as snot on a doorknob. Yeah, if I had six hands, it'd be a piece of cake. All right, that ain't gonna work. All right, so if I put a heavy wedge on this side to change the angle, will that make a difference? Let me try that. The things I try to do to make instruments whole again. The, uh, you know, it's slick. This isn't gonna sit on here. Um, Actually, now that I think about it, it's not going to sit anyway because of this. It's slanted this way, too. Um, there's a tilt to this peg head. So, what I think I'm going to do before I put the two way tape on there is I'm going to sand off this so that this is more square. I'll do that on the sander. I'll just go over and knock off this side. 
Okay, I knocked off a little bit there. You can probably see the edge, the end there, and how it's tapered now. Uh, that makes it kind of hit at a 90 on the mandolin peg head here. And I'm just going to try a little bit of two-way tape to get this to stick as it's slick. Again, slick is not a, on a doorknob. It ain't going to stay there. And I'm going to cut a little more of this off. There we go. That came off. And that is stuck on there. And again, it may not work anyway, even after all that trouble. It's just a test. Again, if you can't clamp it dry, you'll never clamp it wet. So it's just a test to see if I can clamp it up. I think I got a chance, but I, I'll have to do something else. This is why I keep wedges sitting by me at all times. You'd be surprised how often I use them. Uh, it's just amazing how often I use them. So like that wedge there would keep this from getting pushed in. Uh, maybe. See, this is still going to be a juggling act. To get this to hold, it's got to be clamped really well like that. It glued really well and it has to set forever. And uh, it's not too bad, but it's, it's not perfect either. It's close. It's very close to perfect, but it's not perfect. And I think the reason it's not perfect, well, I'm not sure, because it's, it's counterintuitive, because it's, it's tipped, you know, if I'm, exa I'm exaggerating, but this is tipped up. It's, I would have thought it would have went down with this wedge in there. Uh, yeah, it's very close to be imperfect. It really is. Might have been the way I had the clamp on it itself. It won't be an easy glue up no matter what I do. Like I said, if you can't do it dry, don't even think about doing it wet. It's, I, I wouldn't call it perfect, but it's pretty dang good. Let's try a wedge from the bottom side in addition. You know, with CA glue, I could just hold it there. And I know most of you would go that way, but I don't think CA glue will hold this permanently. That's my problem with CA glue. I don't think it, I don't think it will. It might. Uh, CA glue would sure be the easiest way, that's for sure. Here's what I think. I'm going to use regular tight bond. If it don't hold, I can wash it off. You know, where I can't wash off the CA glue very well. And some people would say you could take acetone to it, but yeah, I've done that and it typically le either leaves residue or it just doesn't work very well. Acetone, I know, they claim does it, but it doesn't seem to work that well for me with CA glue. And I've done it a lot. I don't know. There's just some things that don't work for me. Namely, namely gravity. You know, it just doesn't work for me. It works for you, it just doesn't work for me. Wow, it, it's, it's a tricky glue up and a half. Again, if I had that third hand, it wouldn't really be that hard. Anything that can will every time. Even up into the part of the mandolin trying to work its way off the end of the bench. I mean, just anything will happen if it can. There we go. There we go. Yeah. Nice even squeeze out there. That worked pretty nice when it finally worked. Ah, uh, is it going to stay though is the question. Looks pretty dang good to me right now. I'd like to get one little bit of glue out of the inside there. 
Yeah, and another thing a guy could do, and I probably will, is try to put a clamp right here. And yeah, I don't know which kind of clamp, but I'm gonna try it. Might be a mistake. All right, I'm gonna go leave that do its thing. Well, I had a long interruption there, very long. Kind of a catastrophe in the office there in terms of bookkeeping, but we figured it out. Anyway, um, yeah, I don't have anything that even comes close to that size of that. I've got all kinds of stuff on either side of it, bigger and smaller. But, so I found these three little scrap pieces, and if I plain sand them down to the proper thickness, they will probably match fairly well. Yeah, it's just that simple. It's <laughs> just that simple. Yeah, nothing simple. Anybody tells you anything is simple, they're lying to you. Okay, so the first thing is I have to figure out approximately how thick are these things. And I have no way of knowing that. Even this is only going to be an estimation. I'll estimate it as best I can because that's all I got. Well, I'm going to call this 30 thousandths, and presently it's 42. So I'm going to take this over to the thickness sander, run it through, and make it 30 thousandths. That uh, thickness sander is a miracle maker. It's uh, now, you know, roughly 29 thousandths, 28 and a half. And it depends where you measure it. Now, up here it's measuring a little thicker, it's measuring like 30. So 28 and a half pretty consistently is what it's measuring. And if I put it on edge right there by that, I'd say that's 28 and a half. <laughs> it's just impossible to know. It's just impossible to know. And um, yeah, you, you can only estimate and that's all you're doing. I would say this white is the same size it looks like it needs to be 30 thousandths also. So this inside white. So I'm gonna run this through. And I would say the final outside piece should be 60 thousandths based on what I can tell here. And it's just a guess. But that's a common number. So I'm, I'm thinking 60 thousandths would be good. I'm gonna leave it a little bit proud of that because I can always go thinner. And then we'll have our binding made up. It'll look something like that. So I'm gonna run this through the thickness sander, and this is a really short piece, it's gonna to be tough to run through there. And I'll take it down to about 60 thousandths, probably 65 thousandths. Well, there we have 65 thousandths on that. So there you go, that's what it would sort of look like. And it has to match that. So, you know, it, I'm just going to put it up here and see size-wise. I'll try to get the ends butted up where they're fairly close and then stick it in here. Gee whiz, it looks perfect to me. Looks dang close to perfect. I'll take that. Perfect's close enough. Just to make my life simpler here, I should have cut it off to begin with, but I'm going to go ahead and nip those two off so that I got three of them the same length. That'll just make it easier to glue up. The way most of this uh, binding goes together is with acetone. You melt the plastic, run it through a press. Look at there, that's how much dirt is in my little cup here. I want that clean before I try to use acetone in there. All right, put a little acetone in here. It doesn't take very much at all, just a splash. That's Probably more than enough. Then a clean brush, and you basically just have to get this on, well, one side of each of the white, like that, and probably both sides of the black would be good. And then one side of this white. And then, hopefully, run it through the binding press here while it's still wet. And 
and you run it through this press, this just kind of squeezes it together. You end up with one piece of binding. Quite honestly, I don't know if that was good enough, but it's probably going to have to be good enough in this case, because that's about all I got. And I don't think I can do get more acetone on it. I don't think that's going to work. So let's try the next step. Okay, so let's see what we can do about making this binding fit. Ah, it already came apart on me, if I'm being truthful. All right, what I'm trying to do is butt up the one end uh, and then slide it in here. I think you can probably see that it's gonna be a real good match. So that part we did good on. And what I need to do next is probably find a way to chop this off perfectly square. I don't think it is. If anything, I want these two to be wider at the opening on the top, not narrower. And right now they're narrower. Then we need to get in here and clean out the old glue. One of the toughest parts of this is going to be making it jump over this wire right here. If anything, I want to I want it to wedge down in there. I don't you know, in other words, I want the top to be wider than the bottom and the reason is that way when I I can cut mine a little wider at the top and then when I put it down in there it'll wedge tighter as it goes. The further it goes the tighter it gets. You know, this is so tall I you know I probably should just take it on the saw and saw it thinner. The thickness of this and I guess I'm just guessing again well maybe I don't have to guess on this one so much I can kind of tell. 80 thousandths roughly. Yeah, about 80 thousandths. So I'm going to try to make this around 90 or 100 thousandths uh, before I put this together. So I'm going to go uh, run this through the saw and uh, make me a piece that's thinner. Okay, I sawed it off much thinner. I think we're just tall enough. First of all, the tricky part is I have to put a slight undercut on this, very slight, so that it goes down in the hole. And I might even have to touch that up with a file because I got it a little too much, I think. And then I want to mark this spot where I'm going to have to got to cut out for this nail. And how am I going to do that? I don't know, probably with the Dremel tool because it's the old faithful for me. I mean, I could probably do it with a little tiny rat tail file. I'll try that first. If it works, I'll use that. And then I have to cut it to length, and this is the precise cut. This is the cut that matters. And always, as I always do, cut it long and sneak up on it. So I marked it long, and I'm even going to cut it longer than that. Because you never know how something's going to cut. It might break. And... Now I can also see that my mark, my mark there for the, you know, it's going to work here too. So that's going to work. I think we're in really, really good shape now. Just about to make this perfect, as close as to perfect as we can get it. So now I can start sneaking up on it. When you sneak up on something, you really do need to do that. You know, you don't want to go cutting too much too fast. 
the idea here is I want it to have to be f kind of smashed down in there. Heavy there, I hope I didn't cut it too heavy. Nope, I think I got it just right. So there's kind of what it looks like. And then in this case, instead of using the acetone itself, because it's just not that strong, I don't think, I'm going to use this acetone or acetate based glue and I'm going to clean out the slot a little bit better yet because I can still see glue. Trying to get much of the old glue off as possible. And now we will put quite a bit of glue in here to soften this plastic up because it, if you let this stuff set for a couple seconds it starts to soften the plastic. And we'll more or less do the same thing right here. And it's important to put it on the ends too so that the ends can get... And this stuff typically melts the plastic right back together. This is Beacon 527 available at Walmart. So if you got to do binding repair, this is pretty good stuff. Regular model airplane uh, glue is good too. It's the, the kind for gluing together wooden models. It's perfect for this. In fact, it's probably even better. But Beacon 527 is very good. It works really well. And I've put it in there. Now the problem is they squeeze out on the black plastic and that's not good because it will eat up your black plastic there. But you can only do what you can do, you know. I didn't create the problem, I'm just trying to fix it. That's looking wonderful, in fact. It's better than I even thought it would look. I ought to get an Academy Award just for this one. That's pretty dang good right there. It's, once I clean it up, you know, once it cures and sets up, and then we clean it up, that's going to look really good. And what I think I'm going to do now is put some clamps on that. And then the only other thing I'll do there is I'll press in this way to make sure that it's pressed in as far as it can go. Looks really good to me. In fact, I don't think you could do that one any better. That's where we're going to leave it for today. If you're enjoying my daily vlogs, please click that thumbs up. And if you have not yet subscribed, well, shame, 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 shame on you. <laughs> That's what Grandma would have said. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe. Thank you. Yeah, yeah.